Good afternoon, everybody out there in YouTube land. It's your buddy Chopadong. I'm coming at you with a main slate MLB DFS hyper simple approach to picking your player pool. It can't be any easier than formulating a process that works and going through it day in, day out, every day, every slate is the same. If you want details on how to perfect a process for yourself, to your style, to the way that you play, to the games that you play, you need to become a VIP at DFSArmy.com, the one-stop shop for everything. DFS from MLB to NBA to NHL, whatever it is, I typically try to simplify a process for whatever sport it is that I play the most and teach people how to do the exact same thing. So come on in, DFSArmy.com, and use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, to trigger that 20% off discount. As always, like and subscribe to the video, share me out on social media, ring the notification bell, and get those notification alerts delivered to your phone when a new video falls. So thank you very much for tuning in. Let's dive in. And let's take a look at today's slate. If we have a little bit of bonus time, we'll do a little BVP coverage towards the end just to see what we get. Um, when I'm looking at a seven-game slate, and I won't even worry about the other smaller slates. You just do the exact same thing again, but this will be super fast. It covers it all, and we'll rock and roll. I'm looking for the pitchers, and I want to immediately start looking for the combination of price, Vegas odds, and strikeout upside. When I see those numbers, I write them down. And when I write them down, I end up with picking a few of these guys that I like that are up towards the top. This works better on FanDuel than it does DraftKings. But personally, they'd hit the radar on DraftKings if they were worth a crud. So really and truly, those cheaper pitchers that you need on DraftKings to be your SP2 is a little bit of an art in finding that value. And I'm not great at it yet. I'm not going to pretend like I am. So I will generally make several lineups, and I will mix and match a few that I think seem to be the best, You know, kind of like the least objectionable pitcher. But I can usually target a couple of good pitchers as my SP1 or my FanDuel pitcher. It would start tonight with Verlander. 11,000 is quite a bit. 10.5, quite a bit on DraftKings. But you've got a minus 260 Vegas odds, a 517 K score, which if you don't know what K score is, it's strikeout percentage of the pitcher added to the strikeout percentage of the opposing team. It tells us who has a ton of strikeout potential as a pitcher going up against teams that like to strike out. Verlander's numbers have obviously been higher. Minnesota does not strike out this year. It's like 18% or something. So that really squashes Verlander's K upside tonight, and it also means there's room for other people to come up and bring more value to you. So when I'm looking at the 517, it's the tops on the slate, but not by a lot. The minus 260, however, is a pretty big deal. So we will weigh into, we'll let that weigh into our decision making quite a bit. The DFSA grade overall catch all metric strength of the pitching matchup is pretty strong for Verlander. So he's going to be the lead dog on the slate. Let's see if we don't sacrifice too much if we try to save a little bit of money. I mean, Minnesota's been scoring runs lately. That's not the kind of offense this week that you want to be attacking. Let's talk in a month or two. Maybe they've cooled off. But as of right now, not the type of offense you want to attack. So we might bring a little bit of pause into the discussion there and see if we can't find a little bit more perfect matchup for cheaper. If I look at Walker Bueller next, 590, 495K scores, not a significant drop. The 20 points in DFSA grade is, you know, decent drop, but it's not the worst. The price drops off, what, $2,000, but the Vegas odds are, there's just too many drops in here. So the $2,000 is a nice savings, and I might use it some, but I'm not going to deviate much from Verlander for Walker Buehler because I'm sacrificing too much in the Vegas odds, a little bit in the K score, and a little bit in the DFSA grade. And it's not that I'm too afraid of the Cubs at Wrigley. I would check to make sure. I didn't check weather concerns yet. I would check to make sure the wind is blowing in to help the pitcher a little bit, but a rocket is getting out no matter what park you're in, no matter what the hitting environment is in. It would just mean that maybe there's a little better pitching environment tonight in Wrigley and early in the season. That's often what you're looking for. But still not something that's going to make me all of a sudden say, ooh, I want half as many shares of Bueller as I do Verlander. No, he's not eating into my Verlander coverage that much. Erod in Boston facing Detroit. Good sign. Although... Detroit does have a few guys that are running over the L7 WOBA rating of a 400, which you'll see here in a minute. Uh, but Erod, you know, a little bit more of a discount. Not priced up quite as much. Well, five, six hundred bucks. About the same, actually, on DK as Walker Bueller. So there is that. But the minus 200, now we're talking. We're not sacrificing a ton. And the five, four, we're not sacrificing squat. So I would be interested in, in Rodriguez tonight. 
as a pivot off of Verlander because to me the what 2600 bucks is getting to be significant for the fact that I'm just not giving up still a very strong Vegas odds still a very strong K score I like what I see I probably would pivot Verlander may or may not be my dominant pitcher Erod probably would be second if not lead dog for me Looking down at Vincent Velasquez, Velasquez, whatever, 7,500 is a little bit more of a savings, about 900 bucks off of Erod. So this is what I'm comparing everything to now. See, if I had minus, you know, 200 and a 514, would I pay $2,000 more, $2,600 more for a little stronger Vegas odds and really no difference in K-square? The answer is probably no. So you have found your main pitcher. Now we're comparing to him. Velasquez, 7,500. So what, 900 bucks? Priced up significantly on DraftKings percentage-wise accordingly. You know, there's only 600 bucks, but this is $1,700. That's a big deal. So that will weigh into my factoring a little bit. The nearly 500 or 50-50 odds to win the game is not strong. 487 is not a significant drop. The, K, the DFSA grade is not a significant drop. New York Mets have been scoring runs lately. Philly has been giving runs up lately. So not a super strong situation. When I say have been scoring runs, I mean Philadelphia is ranked, or I'm sorry, New York Mets are ranked right now fifth in the league over the last two weeks at just raw scoring runs, raw offense. I'm going to pay attention to that about weekly, and I'm going to, you know, factor that in. I want to target offenses that are scoring a lot of runs that are facing bad pitching. So when I look at who's allowing runs, because that's an indi indication of bad pitching, I see Philadelphia fourth most in the entire league. And when you're fourth most in the entire league and the other team you're facing is fifth most in scoring runs, that's a bad combination for the pitching. It's a good combination for the New York Mets bats. That may, I mean, if they ran up against a Scherzer or a Verlander, of course we take that into consideration. But as a general consideration, that's what you're looking at. And Velasquez, I don't know, he's running into a little bit of a buzzsaw. And I don't know if the savings, you know, it's a thousand bucks, it's pretty good, but I give up a lot in the Vegas odds. And I give up a little bit in the K-score upside, so I'm not 100% sure that I would pivot off of Ed Eduardo Rodriguez for Velasquez. And when I look at Jordan Lyles, Lyles is actually more expensive than Rodriguez on FanDuel, and he's priced down on DraftKings, which is usually a bad sign. So he'd be cheaper here. If you like him, you get a 483 K-score, minus 115 odds. He might be an SP2, like upper end of SP2 type stuff, 61 versus a 63 going against Arizona. But Arizona's been scoring some runs. So I think on FanDuel, Erod's my pitcher. Maybe some pivots to Verlander, pay up a little bit for him to be contrarian. Very little on Bueller, very little on Velasquez, very little on Lyles. But on DraftKings, I may have to consider some of these guys here if I don't take Verlander. So simply stated, that's where I would stand. And when I dive in and flip it on its head, I come down here to these guys, and I'm looking at the bad ratings here. I'm looking at some of the bad Sierras here, here, these two here. And I'm looking for teams to stack against. So the bottom ratings here, Houston, Boston, L.A., Baltimore, these would be teams I would consider stacking, maybe some New York. I would go up a little bit to where was that higher Sierra? 475 for Vargas. So on the 475 for Vargas, Philadelphia. Well, Philly's hit, having trouble hitting out a wet paper bag right now, but I would at least consider them. When I did all of that type of stuff, I came up with Houston and the New York Mets as my favorite two stacks of the night. Obviously down here, New York's a little bit higher, but against Velasquez, they're scoring runs. Philly's giving up runs, so at least I can get into the bullpen and maybe do some damage there. New York being that they are scoring runs, has some hitters that I'm looking for that are doing well, that are probably a little bit underpriced for their performance still. So Houston, New York, probably my two favorite stacks of the night. Secondary stacks would then be Baltimore, Boston, uh, Chicago White Sox, New York Yankees, Minnesota Twins, even against Houston, and maybe some um, Philadelphia against the New York Mets. But I would be very, very cautious going against Verlander and then, of course, going up against the New York Mets with Philadelphia, being that the overall team numbers in Philly are not great. When I go to the Trends tab, and I try to quickly pound through these. I sort by L7 Woba. That's the main factor I look for. And I'm looking at those teams that I want to take a peek at. And I'm starting to look up here. Who's, who's up towards the top? There's some Minnesota. There's some Detroit. That's interesting. Looking for some stacks. There's some Houston down in here. There's four Houstons on that front page. That's kind of what I'd be looking for. And I hate to have to do the refresh button here because this damn thing times out a little bit too often. Drives me nuts. But while we're waiting on the reset, I'll just read the list to you. Chicago White Sox, Yomer Sanchez, James McCann. They're the only ones over a 400 Woba right now. 
Baltimore, Severino, Nunez, Davis, Chris Davis, and then Smith Jr. If he start, if they start, you always got to look for who's going to start. Arizona, Swyart and uh, John Ryan Murphy, whichever one starts. Christian Walker, LeCastro, Escobar, Dyson. There's some great one-offs in there. If you want to take a chance and stack them, you can. They rewarded you earlier this week. Detroit has some guys that are hitting fairly well. Let's jump in here and let's see if we can't actually find them. Ah, crud. There, it jumped on me. So when I scroll over here and I click on Detroit, where are you? There you are. Look, the 549s. You know, 726, small sample size, but if Brandon Dixon gets the start, you want to play him based on what you've seen. Griner, of course, hit a bomb last night. And then down here, Ronnie Rodriguez, if he starts, uh, John Hicks, Gordon Beckham. These are all guys that are hitting over 450 in their L7 Wobas. That's a pretty good sign. But look at uh, Houston. I'll look at Boston here in a second. I would see Tyler White, Josh Reddick, George Springer, Alex Bregman, maybe. Brantley a little bit. These are guys that I'd be looking for. These are the guys I'd be building my stacks around. Being that I like Houston tonight, Tyler White, Reddick, Springer, Bregman, and Brantley would definitely be in my stacks. And I'd probably be going into my optimizer and boosting their projections so that it pulled them first. And I might run into, you know, in Arizona and take a Christian Walker or an Escobar or somebody as a one-off if I wasn't stacking them. Or I might take a one-off in Chris Davis or I might take a one-off in some of these other names that are running hot right now that I'm probably not stacking as an offense. And I'm going to try to compile a team that way. So when I continue on with Boston, that's Moreland, Betts, J.D. Martinez, and Rafael Devers is starting to show a little life again. Here's what I mean. When I scroll over at Rafael Devers, first of all, he's cheap. I'm always looking for value plays. I scroll over and I see a 349 over the last two weeks and a 382 over the last week. He's getting closer to that 400 mark that I would consider. There's not a lot that are really ripping the cover off the ball here. But if you look at Mookie Betts, 319 to 398, 349 to 382, they're starting to heat up a little bit. Maybe we catch fire tonight. It might be worth a tournament stack against Detroit. If I look at Philadelphia, I'd probably only take uh, Andrew Knapp. If I looked at the New York Mets, Robinson Cano, the young guy Smith, Conforto, Alonzo, probably be in my stacks. L.A., I'd probably one off a Cody Bellinger or a Corey Seager. They seem to be hot right now. They're the only ones holding on to their numbers. They're not as hot as they were, and they are overpriced based on their current production in the last few days. So you're going to want to take that into consideration. If, the, if you get a sense that the world wants to run Dodgers out there tonight, get off of them because there's more leverage in the fade. But if you want to include a couple and overpay for them, Bellinger and Seager would be who I'd look for. Uh, Chicago Cubs, of course, Rizzo, Baez, and Contreras are the only three really producing on that team. They'd be the ones I would consider. And being that I'm not stacking the team, I'd probably be looking more for one-offs. And in my optimizer, I'm going to boost the projection of an Anthony Rizzo up there pretty high so that it starts pulling him in as a one-off. If I was, I'm, I'm not going to use the stacking feature for Chicago. If it pulls him in, great. If it doesn't, so be it. Not going to hurt my feelings. Looking at Minnesota, uh, Garver, Castro, Rosario, Scope. Cruz, Astadio, that's a lot of names. They're going up against Verlander. We don't have time. I would, though, I would check the BVP numbers and just make sure that none of them are smashing. If they're smashing and there's two or three guys that hit Verlander really, really well, I would be very interested in a very contrarian stack because I don't think a lot of people are going to go up against Verlander tonight. And Minnesota is scoring runs. I think, you know, second most in the league over the last two weeks. They are hitting the ball well. Houston, Tyler White, Reddick, Springer, Bregman, Brantley, we already mentioned. One of my favorite stacks of the night, New York Yankees. Everybody's hurt, but Gardner's doing well. Frazier, Voigt, Tauschman probably are still in the stackability type. If you want to stack Yankees, that's where I would go. They'd be a secondary stack of mine. And the LA Angels, Lestea, Goodwin, and Lucroy. I might use Lucroy as a one-off at the catcher spot if I need a little bit of value or something because the guy's been okay. Lestea at second base, they're okay. They're nothing, they're nothing I'm going to build a foundation around. They're nothing I'm going to boost too highly projection-wise to make sure they pull into every darn lineup that I build. But I'm going to use these names. Hopefully you wrote them down. I'm going to use these names as the types of players I'm going to build around with Houston, New York first, and then a little mixtures in of you know Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, White Sox, New York Yankees, Minnesota, whatever. It kind of depend on how I get a gauge on the chalk, where the chalk might go. In a seven-game slate, it's not terrible. You usually don't have to worry about it too terribly much. But if you do see something like a Verlander, it's a very popular name, it's probably a very popular pitcher, then it would definitely give you some leverage. You've got logic behind it to stack Minnesota because they're scoring a lot of runs lately. And if 
they hit him well, they are in a good spot. What, we're at 15 minutes? Busted up that seven-game slate? Hyper simple approach. Pick your pitcher, flip it on its head, and pick the bats going against the terrible pitchers, and then so sift through those offenses and look for the hot bats in the offenses you targeted to stack. That's how simple the process can be for baseball. Anything else is fluff and overthinking it. I'm not too worried about splits. I'm not too worried about that. I pay attention to them. I listen to them. I'm not too worried about BVP. I pay attention to it. I listen to it. And if I have extra time, I'll go looking around. But tonight, I've got myself targeted with two or three good offenses and a couple of good pitchers, and I'm going to let the optimizers start doing the mixing from there. I will adjust the optimizers and boost points of people that I want to see. And from there, I'll let it do the rest. And I just roll the dice, roll the Yahtzee cup out there, 15, 20 lineups, see where it lands me. More times than not, if I spend, you know, five bucks in a quarters type contest, I'm getting back, you know, anywhere between a buck fifty and four dollars or something. Or I can turn around sometimes six, seven dollars or whatever. But really and truly, I'm trying to get myself in line to win something like you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. That's what's going to boost the bankroll. You can do that with the solo shot on DraftKings. You can do that with some of the other contests over on uh, FanDuel with the 10 max or the, you know, the eight max type tournaments. Very, very simple way to build some lineups. Treat them as a portfolio. Treat all of your lineups as a package deal. You're trying to get back some of the money that you put in on your bad nights. You're hopefully trying to get back more than you put in a little bit here and there to kind of grind your bankroll. But most importantly, you if you can do that type of stuff indefinitely where you're getting back most of your money or some of your money, you can live indefinitely losing a few bucks here and there. And then what you're going to do is have one of those big nights somewhere down the road. Maybe it's next week. Maybe it's three weeks from now. Maybe it's two months from now. I don't know. But you will eventually have one of those bigger nights and all of a sudden it'll repair some of the damage. If not, really boost your bankroll and then you can contemplate stepping up your play if you like this type of advice ring the notification bell hit the like and subscribe button i will see you on the inside when you become a vip at dfsarmy.com using coupon code chop to save that 20 percent off get in here and trigger the content tools and coaching that are making people better players you can hear it coming out of my mouth i'm just as passionate inside i will spend the time with you or direct you to the people that can spend the time with you to make you a better player. Let's rock and roll guys, let's burn this slate up and I will see you hopefully in the winner's circle later on tonight.